Hello again, minions, it's Wheezy. Today, we're gonna talk about the Halo Infinite Tech Preview, and yeah, I'm wearing a PlayStation shirt to talk about Halo, because I'm not a fanboy. I don't give a shit, I loved Halo Infinite. Let's go talk about it. Okay, minions, as you can tell from the intro, I'm very excited about Halo, and so getting to play in the tech preview was a lot of fun. Uh, even though there wasn't a ton in the tech preview, there was big team battle, there was social matchmaking, so there was 4v4, and honestly, I don't even know what big team battle is. Uh, it's fire teams of four, so 12v12, 16v16, I'm not entirely certain, um, but something like that. And uh, a limited number of maps, but everything that I saw was absolutely pure Halo. It was really fantastic. And so the first thing that I want to say is that Halo Infinite feels like Halo. And when I say that, I mean Halo 3... <laughs> Halo Reach, Halo 2, I don't mean Halo 4, and Halo 5, uh, which I spent very uh, little time actually playing. Um, so Halo 3 especially, I spent an absolute ton of time playing uh, when it was, you know, in its prime. It was like right as Xbox Live was really hitting its prime, because Halo and Halo 2 were on the original Xbox, and then Halo 3 was Xbox 360 when Xbox Live was becoming more ubiquitous. And Halo 3 just had so much. It had Griff Ball and Forge, custom maps, social, casual playlists, ranked playlists. Like, if you look at my service record on, on Halo, uh, on Halo Waypoint, I think on Halo 3, I'll put this up on the screen, they did... I played like over three days of Halo 3 in total playtime, which is significant. I've spent, you know, significantly more time than that in Call of Duty and Battlefield games, but, but it was a lot of time in Halo 3. And then Halo Reach, I don't think it had the time necessarily, but it had like about 2,500 kills. And if you compare that to the three days I played Halo 3, then it was a, over 5,000 kills to give you an idea of how much played. Then you move on to Halo 4, and I got about... 200 kills and then halo 5 i got about 100 kills played that for about an hour and i think the bulk of that was actually recently going back and playing in anticipation of halo infinite so obviously halo 4 and halo 5 didn't really catch my attention because for those of you aware that's when 343 kind of took over from bungie when bungie and microsoft split and bungie went to develop destiny so this feels like a return to form. It feels like classic Halo, Halo 3, Halo Reach with some modern additions, but that don't take away from the Halo formula, right? So there's sprinting and sliding, which has become pretty standard. There's ADSing, um, which is not typically a Halo kind of thing, but it all fits very perfectly. It feels like it's always been there in the way that it plays it's it's th their implementation of it is so far absolutely perfect so i don't anticipate them drastically changing the gameplay system before the full game launch in december but it's it it feels very very halo very amazing and it's you know it just makes me very excited as you can tell um in my playstation shirt talking about an xbox game um so weapon balance and map design which are a critical component of any shooter. They were fantastic. When I, if you saw my video, actually I don't even know if I posted that video. When I was first playing Big Team Battle, um, when it started on the second weekend of the tech preview, they basically took what is the spiritual successor of Blood Gulch, and I think that's called Fragmentation, and it is very different from the traditional Blood Gulch, uh, you know, uh, map that has been around since the original Halo and has gone through iterations and had some, you know, modernization, some things added to it, but generally stayed the same. Fragmentation was drastically different, but still noticeably Blood Gulch. Um, and initially I was kind of like, this is weird, like it was kind of, it felt fragmented, <laughs> it felt scattered, um, and it felt a little confusing, but once you kind of learn the flow of the map, it actually 
focuses traffic very well. It helps protect lines of sight so that you can have closer range engagements and longer range engagements. It's just, it ended up being really uh, a great map, but the other maps that I played too were also very uh, well done, very well balanced as far as balancing play styles, placing weapons. I mean, it just, it felt just so much fun just playing through the entire thing. Um, the TTK in Halo is much slower than in a game like um, Battlefield and Call of Duty. Call of Duty's TTK is super, super fast. Uh, Battlefield is a little bit slower, but still reasonably fast versus Halo, which is a slow TTK. Everybody's got shields. You got to break the shields and then kill the player, um, which makes it very teamwork and skill based team shooting helps uh, you to overcome that TTK or you really in a 1v1 fight have to be the better player to get the kill and you can turn on people you can react to things you have time to react and fight back um, and it just turns into a, a game that's very satisfying where you feel like you either won a fight or you lost a fight and it always kind of makes sense like oh yeah i lost that fight you know i kudos you know well played sir um so it's it's really great in that it's got that balance teamwork is a huge part of halo as far as team shooting but it's still fun to play with randoms because you can kind of intuit that tr teamwork even if it's not people that you play with constantly obviously if you have a stacked team of people and you communicate and play together very well you're gonna do better but that's just the reality of any game anytime um so all of that just kind of creates this really awesome package now there is a skill curve for sure in halo because of the w the slower ttk and the fact that the better player tends to win fights um, that does create a skill curve, and it can be um, less casual friendly than something like Call of Duty, where you can be pretty trash and still get a decent amount of kills. Um, Halo will has always had a upfront SBMM system, meaning they've always had casual or social versus ranked playlists, where the ranked playlists do a really strict job of matching you up with people of your skill and using that to evaluate whether or not you need to move up or down so it creates really competitive matches if you're into that kind of thing otherwise you can drop into casual playlists shoot around try and have some fun and it will also typically try to get you to people who are about where you are so that you can have some fun like you'll you'll notice in halo um that that especially if you've been away for a while you'll drop in and you might get an easy game and then the next the second or third or fourth game will start to feel more competitive um and that's that's the game trying to figure out that balance of fun and uh, and and challenge and for someone who's skilled and plays a lot of shooters like i do or people who play a lot more than i do um you may be like oh man i want to go pub stomping and just wreck all these randoms if I want to, you know, and I don't want to try hard every game. Um, you know, that's the big argument about SBMM right now, and it's totally understandable. That said, from the standpoint of people who don't spend 20 hours playing games every week, or like me, or unlike me, like haven't spent 20 plus years playing shooters, you know, or watched Wheezy's War College and learned how to how to do better. For people who legitimately enjoy shooters but don't spend a ton of time playing them, it's no fun for them to get into a match with someone who gets perfect BR shots on them every time, can hit jumping sniper headshots across the map. Like, that's not fun for people. As much fun as it is to essentially be a good player who's hunting human bots, for lack of a better term, um, Halo has always done a good job of, of balancing that so that it doesn't become a slaughter fest for the weak or a complete like try hard sweat zone for the uh, for the competitive ones unless you explicitly go into the playlists and say I want to figure out where my rank is um, so that is another thing that I'm really excited about there I, it, Halo I think does over time weed out more casuals just because ultimately you gotta learn how to get your BR shot down you gotta learn weapon placements it's it's not as much uh, pick up and play if you if you want to get into halo you kind of need to get into halo a little bit but for those of you who go back in the day uh, i did a small series of videos on halo reach and i imagine i'll be spending a significant amount of time with halo infinite based on 
what I've seen so far. And so you can probably expect more videos about Halo Infinite to help you use Halo strategies, not just the weapon skill, but also figuring out where to find uh, advantageous positions, where to find the weapons that you need on maps, how to focus on that stuff. So if maybe you're new to Halo, a little intimidated and hesitant, stick around here and you will get some some advice that will help improve your Halo game. Halo is, is, is just fantastic as far as the way that they balance it. And this feels like that kind of Halo, whereas 4 and 5 didn't. They felt like they lost their, their soul a little bit. Um, touching on the weapons, like sniping is very satisfying. I'm not a great sniper. <laughs> um, but, you know, I'm probably, as far as with a controller, like above average. So I can snipe well enough. Um, and it feels very satisfying. A one-shot headshot if you can land it, and a two-shot anywhere shot. Otherwise, there's, a, there's a, a delay between shots. So when you get a shot with a sniper rifle, it feels like you earned it, right? When you get a good kill in Halo, it feels like you got that kill. The BR is another one that's great. Like, the BR is three bursts to pop the shields, and then if you get that fourth burst as a headshot, then that's a perfect BR kill, right? You pop the shields, you get the last burst as the headshot, the player drops. If you don't get that fourth burst headshot, if you keep doing body shots, then it's about six bursts to kill instead of four, and that's the skill differentiator, right? You, you go center mass for those first three bursts, and then you adjust and get that headshot on the last burst, and it's very satisfying. It's, it's just, there's so much that's very satisfying about Halo gunplay. Um, the AR, even, the base weapon that you start with, which isn't super effective, and I would recommend that one of the first things you do in any life in Halo is try and find a better weapon than the default weapon. But the AR, by virtue of the way that it gets less accurate as you fire it, if you burst fire it, if you pop fire it, can actually be quite effective at close to medium, well it's very effective at close range, and even at medium range it can be effective if you learn how to burst fire it. We won't get into too much of the specific tactics right now, but there is a lot about Halo that's like that, where where there are nuances to learn, there are skill-based things that can give you an advantage in a fight. Um, going along with that, as I mentioned a little bit before, engagements almost never felt like bullshit. I had a couple of deaths where it felt a little bit like lag, like I went behind cover and then I died. That wasn't super common and it wasn't super egregious, and almost never did a fight feel like I got screwed over, like it was unfair, like they um, had some advantage that I couldn't have. Sometimes, yes, they get a they get a power weapon, right? They have a rocket launcher, <laughs> and I've got an AR. And unless I really pull off a good play or get them by surprise, like that's probably not going to turn out okay. But it always felt right. Like when I lost a fight, it felt like oh my shots were off, or it felt like oh I you know I I had I was at a disadvantage, I was out of position, I didn't. They used a grenade or it. It, it very much feels like fair, which ultimately in a shooter is the biggest thing that contributes to my enjoyment and I think for most people as well. If the game feels unfair, you're not going to have fun. <laughs> Call of Duty, especially since they've done kill streaks and stuff like that, there's been a whole lot that has started to feel very unfair. Um, and that is part of what appeals to the casuals, but it is also part of what makes it irritating to people who feel like the amount of time and effort and skill they put into a game ought to give them some sort of return. So, um, Since I've been gushing this entire time, let's talk briefly about some of the negatives uh, from the tech preview. Um, and the first one that jumps into my head is that the commando uh, kind of sucks butts. <laughs> I, I'm trying to figure out the role of that weapon. I mean, it's because it's a, it's a slow firing automatic, so it plays kind of like a DMR, but with an automatic fire, and it's only got a 20 round magazine, and the, the recoil is really high, but it also doesn't kill very fast. Like, so you would feel like it would be a slow rate of fire, high recoil, high damage weapon, but after you pop someone's shields, it feels kind of like the BR in that you have to get headshots to get a kill, and more than one, it has to be probably at least two headshots to kill. But the recoil makes it so much harder to do that versus the BR where that last burst is three shots, but poof, it's like, if you get it on target, boom, you get that headshot, that's that kill. With the commando, you pop their shields. If you move up and get one more shot on their head, it doesn't kill them. And then your and then your gun recoils, and then you got to try and get back on target to get another headshot to try and get a kill. Or you just stick with the body shots, and it's... 
I don't know what it is about the commando, it just doesn't feel very good. <laughs> um, similarly, the Marine's shotgun feels like absolute garbage. Like, it's not a power weapon. Um, so, because it's a different shotgun, it's not the pump action shotgun from previous Halos. I'm not sure if that'll be back in the full game. But this one is a magazine uh, fed or a drum magazine fed uh, shotgun. So the power is lower. So even if you're at point blank range, it's not a one shot kill. Like, it's one shot. I think if you're at super close range, I think one shot will break a shield. Um, I don't know if I ever got a two shot kill with that shotgun. So even at close range, if you're on, I think it might take two or three, at least probably two or three shots to kill. I'm not sure if I ever got a two shot kill. It was always three or more. And then at anything beyond point blank range. I mean, why even bother? I don't So there are a couple of weapons that are underpowered, but there's nothing that really feels overpowered, which is a lot more important, I think. You don't want to have, like, the plasma pistol is essentially trash, right? But it's okay. It doesn't need to be buffed to be competitive. It's just something that you pick up in a pinch if you need. Maybe that's, maybe that's the commando and the shotgun. It's like, if you're in a close range battle and you run out of ammo on your AR, or whatever, and you gotta pull out that shotgun to finish them off in one shot. Maybe that's the role it serves, could be. Um, another negative, muting players <laughs> takes too long, too too much. It's too hard to figure out if someone's irritating on the microphone, it's too hard to figure out who they are. You have to basically wait until they talk, pull up the scoreboard to see the microphone icon, look for which microphone icon is on while someone is talking, figure out who they are, and then from that screen, you can't select them to mute them. You have to back out, go into the pause menu, bring up the social menu for the current game, scroll through the list of all the players in the game, find that player that you identified as the one who was talking, click on their name, and then mute them. That is a quality of life thing that matters, especially when uh, people tend to get on their microphones and just be irritating pieces of shit. They'll have music in the background, they'll be watching TV, they'll be sitting too close to their TV and not using headphones, and so you can hear their game through their microphone. There's babies in the background crying, like... They need to make it easier to mute people. That's something that Call of Duty figured out, you know, 15 years ago. Um, what else? The scoreboard is weird and broken. Like, it doesn't seem to sort by anything that makes any sense. The fields are formatted weird, like the kill death column has like seven decimal places <laughs> like very basic stuff that is should be easy for them to fix but it's like it should be really easy for you to fix why the fuck is your scoreboard so broken why did you use a font that makes it so that when you put the the statistic for what the how many player how many kills or what accuracy percentage the player shot why did you choose a font that's so big that the the number has to scroll back and forth to be visible I, <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> um, and early access, tech preview, matchmaking was weird and not super reliable. Um, when it worked, it worked great, but every once in a while it would kind of hang up on itself and you would have to restart, you'd have to kill the game and restart it and, and log back in to get matchmaking to work again. Um, after you kind of figured out what the telltale signs were when it was locked up, it was really quick to just kill it, relaunch it, get back into a game. Um, but the first couple of times it was like, why is it taking so long to matchmake? Sometimes, so hopefully they'll get that figured out too. Um, those are kind of the negative things that I ran into, but nothing that really affected the core gameplay in a negative way, and nothing that felt like this is something they can't fix. These all felt like things like they have to fix this, right? They're gonna fix the fucking scoreboard, right? They may not get around to streamlining the mute process, but please, that's a quality of life thing. Please fucking do that. All right, Halo versus other shooters. Call of Duty Battlefield. Obviously they're shooters, so they have some overlap. The Venn diagram of shooter audiences has some overlap, but it's a very different game, and so the Call of Duty crowd is not necessarily the Halo crowd in general, or the Battlefield crowd for that matter. Especially w with Call of Duty going World War II and Battlefield going modern, 2042. Halo, futuristic space shooter, shields, space guns, like, the aesthetic is a different thing as well, but the time to kill is dramatically different. The way it plays is dramatically different. Halo is its own kind of monster and it attracts its own crowd. So if you are a Halo fan, or perhaps you're looking for a shooter and you're kind of hating something like Call of Duty right now, Halo might be something for you to get into. It's a good community. There's a lot of bros in it, but you know, shooters are going to have bros. It's just it's what it is. But people who are in, who love Halo, love Halo. I mean, so... I think from that standpoint, it definitely has its own market. And I was thinking about it going back, like Halo 3 was Xbox 360, 
Halo 4, I think, was also Xbox 360. Halo 5 was on the Xbox One. So Halo has gotten in this weird place where they're like releasing, where they've released like one game per console generation <laughs> since Bungie left. And uh, so this feels like an opportunity for Halo to have a comeback, right? Halo 5, I just like, it was completely under the radar. Halo 4, just especially after Halo 3 and Reach was just kind of like, what the fuck is this? Uh, this feels like it could really be a real return to form and Halo could really come back to the forefront. Especially since the multiplayer is going to be free to play. So you don't have to buy Halo to play the multiplayer. It's going to be free to play. We'll, we'll touch back on that again in a second. But I want to go back um, and touch on the fact that, yes, there have been some delays. The game itself got delayed. It was initially supposed to be a launch game for the Series X, which makes sense. Um, but it appears that that time has gone uh, to good use and the game is going to be in a better state when it launches. That said, Forge Mode and Campaign Co-op have been delayed, which for me personally isn't a huge loss. Those are core parts of Halo. They need to be there. Do they have to be there at launch? Not necessarily, because for me personally, first thing I do is play through the campaign to enjoy that. Whenever there's a single player experience, I love to jump, jump in and play through that. And then the multiplayer experience, which as we said, is already looking pretty damn solid. So, looking forward to Forge coming in because community game modes, custom game modes, is a big part of what made Halo 3 so fantastic and gave it such a long life. Like we had, like Shotty Snipers, Griff Ball. Um, I I had a custom game mode in uh, Halo 3 that uh, we used to play all the time, where it was just uh, basically uh, Spartan lasers and. Um, rocket launchers with low gravity <laughs> like super high speed low gravity so you'd scream around you'd float really high and you'd have to try and hit each other with spartan lasers or rockets like that kind of stuff like really can add some life to a game and a lot of fun to a game and oh my god please griff ball i want griff ball back um so yeah going back to the state the multiplayer free to play their battle passes I've, re I've heard some, and I agree with this, I've heard some people talk about this. The way it looks is that Halo is about to set the new standard for live service shooters in that they're doing a battle pass system, like Call of Duty's done, like Apex Legends has done, like Battlefield is going to do. I guess Battlefield did that during Battlefield 5 as well. But the battle passes won't expire, which means you're not gonna be time boxed into completing them, which is good, so if you invest money, ultimately is what this is, into that battle pass. It's not like you've got three months to play it and then it's gone forever, right? That that happened in uh, like Cold War, because I played Cold War less until I finally gave up on it. It was like, I'm not gonna buy this battle pass because I'm not gonna play this game enough to unlock the stuff in it. And I'm not gonna spend essentially $10 worth of real world money on something that I'm not going to get a full use out of before it expires. Um, so with Halo, you buy a battle pass, you get to keep it, and as new seasons come out, as new battle passes come out, you will be able to choose which battle pass your progression is going towards, so that you can go back to old ones and finish out those unlocks. I love that idea. That's That that makes you loyal to a game and feel like you can invest in it, right? If it's free to play, I, I'd give my money to a battle pass system, or I'm like, oh, I really want to unlock that thing. I maybe I'm not going to play, you know, 2042 is keeping a lot of my time. Maybe I wouldn't otherwise buy the Halo Battle Pass because I wouldn't think I would unlock everything. This takes that away. I can I can still support the game, still unlock things. Um, also, one thing that was really cool that I didn't realize until I was reading up on it right before this video is that they've made it so that the things that are in the Battle Pass can't be purchased, which means that if you've got something from a Battle Pass, it means you unlocked it. It means you earned it versus having some things be unlockable, but you can also buy them in a pack, you know, or like with weapons and stuff like that. Although this is all gonna be cosmetic stuff, but it, you know, stuff that you earn, you earn. Um, that said, I will pause for a moment and say the fact that one of the things we got 10, 15 years ago in video games was character customization. And the fact that that has been taken from us and is now being sold back to us, <laughs> does irritate me a little bit. The fact that I can't just go and paint my Halo armor the way I want to. I have to wait for 343 
to design the color palette that I want, and then I have to figure out how to unlock it or buy it. Like, that irritates me. It's not the end of the world. But because it's cosmetic, it's not pay to not pay to win and stuff like that. But anyway, that is what it is. So that doesn't take away from the overall experience. I still think that they're doing th what this looks like is battle pass done right. Um, so I'm I'm looking for just overall. I'm super excited for this game. Obviously, when it comes out, I'm excited to play through the campaign. Um, I'm going to be doing uh, story time videos for sure on that, um, and I'm. If the game continues to be as good as it looks like it's going to be, I will almost certainly be putting a significant amount of time into Halo Infinite, um, even in parallel with Battlefield 2042. So, um, yeah, let me know if uh, what you guys think of Halo Infinite. Did you guys play the tech preview? Are you looking forward to it? Are you on the fence about Halo? I mean, I'm ready for Halo to return to form. You know, like I said, I got my PlayStation shirt on, but... A good game is a good game, and uh, I'm a gamer, not a not a fanboy. So, um, if you guys are uh, are excited about Halo, if you guys got some value out of uh, this video, maybe it helps you uh, decide whether or not you want to take a closer look at Halo. Leave me a like. Uh, if you didn't find this very useful, you didn't like it, you can leave me a dislike. And uh, if you're not a minion, subscribe to become one, so that when I say hello, minions, I'm talking to you. All right, I'll see you guys in the next one.